All right, continuing with digital painting. We're nine videos in, but I wanted to point out the playlist, the special topic playlist on CMYK color separation that we did when we turned in our posters. So this is something we can also apply to our digital painting. And so my hope is to finish the digital painting today in a very direct painterly way, but then to also mess with it in kind of a postmodern way using some digital tools. So this is how far we've come. I use compositing to combine my dog with some old military portraiture to, to make a photo reference to paint from. I then did a sketch layer just in a, a loose, low opacity earth tone. I then did a shape painting layer, what you can think of as a speed painting or an underpainting, just using a customized brush that's big and bold and soft edged. It's kind of impressionistic. And then I created another layer, which is the refined paint layer using the same brush, but being a little bit more targeted and zoomed in. And there's still more that needs to be done to finish that off. So we're gonna see this in Photoshop. And we're gonna see all of these layers set up. And then my reference is here. And this is what I've painted. And now I'm just gonna be very direct. And looking at my reference, I wish I could shrink this a little bit more. Maybe I can extend this a little to use this screen space. There we go. So on my refined paint layer, you'll notice if I turn off the shape painting underneath, it's a lot of small directed strokes where the direction of the stroke really matters. That's kind of the type of painting I'm going for, inspired by some of these examples. And I need to, to work more on, obviously, his chest. So I have the navigator open there. It would be great to have the reference in. And one way I can do that, there's a few ways, but one way without so much space is I can float my painting. And then I can open up my reference in preview an external program kind of shrink it and have it off to the side and zoom in on the part I want to work on mainly this shoulder now so I'm going to try to work between those two Okay, I'm going to use the brush. This is my customized brush. I have it at a 76. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I have it at an opacity of around 70. And remember, I hold down Option to steal colors. And I am mostly going to be, I'm just going to be stealing them from myself here. So I'm working on some refinement. I might zoom in a bit with Command Plus, move down. I like the loose style of the metals that I'm doing so far. So, so much of digital painting is just setting it up so it's useful to you in the way you work. All right. I'm going to start by establishing some of these darks. It's nice once you get off of faces and anatomy, you can be a little bit looser. The stakes aren't quite so high as you're doing your painting. And just like in professional life, I'm going to move with haste here. You never have a lot of time to dawdle. And 
And by overlaying with the 70%, I get a lot of different color matches that I can use in different ways. By using the tablet, I can cover a lot of ground more quickly. I want something darker, I just go over it a few more times. I'm trying not to get too fussy. Squinting a lot, kind of seeing the edges. Remembering highlights and shadows, it's really the, the values that tell the illusion of the form more than your details. And once you kind of understand the logic of what you're painting, then it's easier to improvise and work on your own ideas. And I recommend, I know some of you were doing this, I recommend never painting at 100% opacity because you always wanna have all of those different layers that you've been working on kind of inform your process as you go through. And to paint with 100% opacity or even 90% opacity anywhere is to kind of obliterate everything underneath. Most traditional paints don't cover at a high opacity. And so you're always kind of dealing with the surface and the colors underneath to some extent. It's really only like a sign painter's enamels that try to cover fully. And those paints are, are not very common. So tints and tones, different variations. I've got enough kind of varied color in here already from my shape painting layer, all the pinks. I don't want to ignore that even if I don't see it so much in the, in the reference. I do need some darker tones. And painting is a, a fun skill to build up. It definitely takes practice and time. But digital painting like this is actually a great way to practice traditional painting without having to waste any money on paint and paper and canvas and materials. It's also a whole lot cleaner. But you still need to be pretty disciplined about how you're looking at it and how you're addressing it. Just like you would if this was actual paint. It allows you to try out so many techniques, which are really fun. And then digital has some advantages on traditional painting in terms of how flexible it can be. So we're going to play with that. once we finish with just our straightforward painting. Ah, I keep doing that. Somehow closing preview. Hmm. My brush seems to not be... pressure sensitive anymore. So remember brush settings are more important even than your brush shape. You want to play with that shape dynamic, make sure it's dialed in.
Hmm. Why is it not giving me size sensitivity? Uh, press the button. Am I on a different tool? There we go. Yeah, so if something isn't working as you expect it to, take the time to address that. You can always... figure it out. So usually I would have this open in Photoshop. I can kind of show you that except that I don't have the options in this limited screen size to, to show them in Photoshop side by side. So I'm doing it in preview instead. So however you can get it to work. A lot of time now digital painters like to use multiple screens. So they'll have reference up on a tablet or something and then be working on their, their workstation for the rest. Used to be we, we artists, we commercial artists, we printed a lot of reference out and then worked from it. Now we all just have monitors next to our drafting tables and computer stations. It's very easy just to get digital reference for things. There's probably downsides to that too. And I still like printing things out every once in a while, but saves ink. We all know how difficult it is to have home computers or home, home printers working appropriately. Okay, more and more. Some highlights in here, get some definition. I referenced a John Singer Sargent painting of a general just because he really used an efficiency of brush strokes. And on my best days, that's what I feel like I can do. I'm feeling a little less energetic this morning. Keep reminding yourself to keep pushing. Make every mark matter. And generally when that happens for me, I try to push like I was just starting the painting. Bigger strokes covering more area, being more aggressive, trying to fight against that general impulse to be tentative. Hmm. It might be my screen recorder that's messing with it in the corner. And you decide how fussy you get. All right. So the pink has served its duty. It's giving me more interesting colors. To choose from. Now I think I'm kind of done with it. And I'm ready to kind of frame this in and then work on this area. I'm going to do it this way. So something you'll see in all of the speed painting tutorials online that usually speed up, you know, this arduous building phase is that they'll always at some point reevaluate their overall layout and composition.